Hey everyone. So today we're going to just kind of continue where we left off uh, last time from the first tutorial. Again, sorry for how long that one was, um, but it definitely gets us going in the right direction for just a small project that we're going to be putting together. Um, today I'm going to just kind of show you guys how to tie just easy textures um, to a box 2D physics object. So essentially what we made last time was a box that just kind of jumped. Um, you could move left and right, had normal gravity as you see here, 9.8, um, on a single platform. Uh, today we're going to tie a cat image. If we go over here, um, you'll notice that this is in the Android directory under assets. Um, I just made some extra folders in there uh, to keep a hierarchy going. Um, and I have this cat. There we go, little cat guy. If you remember him from the very first channel introduction video, uh, he'll be joining us along the way for a little bit uh, until I decide to use him for some other project. Um, so yeah, well, let's jump in, shall we? Uh, first things first, I remember last time we didn't really cover this, but uh, we should add in a scale object just to make it easier on us down the road um, if we want to mess with different screen sizes and stuff uh, we'll probably use that later as this project builds up to the tutorial series um, so yeah change it in the resize scale and then change it in the initialization of the camera um, and I think that should be it, really. Uh, it doesn't really need to affect anything else. Everything else is based off of the camera, and because we use the scale on the camera, everything will scale properly with it. Um, okay, so to render textures, you're going to need a thing called a batch, or in our case, a sprite batch. Um, This is a process that allow, or this is a object that allows you to render simple textures, um, texture regions, and various objects like that. Um, you can also render flat, kind of uh, simple geometry using a shape renderer, but we'll cover that in, in other topics. Um, so we got our sprite batch, and let's initialize it just below here. Batch equals new. Right batch, okay, and that's really about all you have to do um, to get it started. But if you do want to use it and you want it to kind of um, work with your camera and make sure it's scaling everything that it draws with the camera's scale, you need to do batch dot. Um, oh, what is it? Set pro projection matrix and get that camera dot combined again, like we did uh, when we had to scale our box 2D renderer. So there's that. Now everything we do with the batch will scale properly and uh, we'll be able to use it to render stuff. So why don't we get our texture loaded now? Um, as that's kind of the next step because we want something to put on the screen. Uh, we'll just call it text for now and import it, and then below batch, we can do text equals new texture. Um, then if you look at here, when you just use quotations like that, it'll use the uh, assets folder by default if you have your project structure set up uh, right. Um, as you see here, the working directory is chosen to be the Android assets folder. You can change that to be anything you want, but it's good habit to just leave it as it is for the libgdx pro, uh, project because um, that's kind of working standard for them. So right off the bat it starts in the assets and we'll go into the images and we want cat.png. There's our texture. Okay now let's get to rendering it. Um, Batch.begin. This will allow, uh, it kind of opens the rendering support um, 
or the rendering protocol for textures uh, with, I believe it uses OpenGL. And then you also want to end it when you're done. Now you only want to do rendering inside here. You don't want to put any game logic whatsoever. That will slow it down. That's very, very hard uh, on the processing um, of your game. It'll make it very inefficient and it'll just, it'll cause lag eventually. You might not see it if you start doing it in these small areas, but try to keep logic out of there as much as you can. It's just good practice. Um, and so we want to render our texture that we have. So we do batch dot draw text, and then we'll just say 30, 30 for now. How about that? Um, so now that we got our texture, our batch set up and everything, let's see what we get. Oh, and again, I know this won't be in the uh, current build we just pulled up, but always remember to dispose. Just always keep that in the back of your head. Um, and like I said, when it comes to textures, we'll get into an asset manager later. They definitely help with keeping your uh, project optimized. All right, so now if you remember, we have the uh, green box here that's static starting at like a negative value. Um, so the zero, zero coordinates are like somewhere up here, it looks like, for the camera. Um, and, or, yeah, the world coordinates are starting at zero, zero, somewhere right there. Um, so we got our cat on screen. That's good. That's progress. Uh, let's get it tied to our box object so we can actually see it move around now. Okay, so all we have to do is player.getPosition.x um, Again, times ppm because we're pulling box2d information out so you have to multiply. Um, if you're giving box2d information you divide. So player.getPosition.y times ppm. Okay, let's see what that gives us. And that's really, like, once we do that it will begin to follow the player because we're getting the player's direct position and uh, we'll start to see some motion of the texture. Okay, um, so something kind of weird happened there. Uh, you'll notice it's like off-center, um, but it is following our character now, our little box that we got jumping around. Um, okay, so we can exit out of there. And then if we go uh, back down here, you'll remember when we were making our box, we had to do that divide by two when we set it as a box uh, shape. Um, that was because it always thinks about the center instead of like a corner. Um, so we did get it attached to our player, but we got it attached to the player center. And unfortunately, textures start at the bottom left corner um, for their coordinate location. So all we need to do is just add the uh, text.get width divided by 2. So that'll give us like the 16 and then plus text height divided by 2 and that'll give us another 16 because that cat image is a 32 by 32 picture. Um, just forgot to mention that. And we'll run it one more time and we should get our expected output. Oh gosh, uh, you know what? I believe that should be minus. Yep. It's supposed to be minus. Forgot we're working on a uh, different, because this is false, um, the Y on my Cartesian uh, coordinate system is on the bottom left, not the top left. Yeah, now with those fixed, everything should be how we want it. Perfect. There we go. We got our simple cat image following our box. 
and you can kind of see that, that we can treat that as just the collision. So BoxGD takes care of all the collisions and all the hard work for us. So with that, we are all done uh, with this tutorial. And next, I believe we'll be talking about how to integrate tiled 2D or uh, tiled maps into our Box2D world or kind of overlay the Box2D world over our tiled map so we can have more advanced collisions. All right, and with that, thank you for joining.